Hello. <clears throat> And that playlist changes from time to time because I add new things and I take things off. So if you want to grab the songs that are there, it will be changing for the next class. Next class, meaning like I'll probably redo it in about a month. So hi, everybody. Welcome back. And those of you that are just joining us, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. All right, let's get started. So we're going to get to a section today. We're Well, let's say here, we're first stopping on all this discussion of the five problems of meditation, along with their eight antidotes and the, or solutions to those problems. So we're going to finish that up. And then Pavlonka is going to go into the ma third major section of this, where we're going to learn about the different stages of our meditation. Like where are, what level are we at in the meditation itself? To be able to recognize, well, I'm at level one or I'm at level three or I'm at seven you know, wherever you end up being. And it's not a linear process either. I mean, moving through them is kind of linear, but you'll go through various stages, even in a, in a meditation itself. So knowing what to do when you get to a certain place in the meditation and then how to maintain it or what to do when you drop down. So it becomes a constantly dynamic situation that you just have to be aware of what's happening. And if you're not aware of what's happening in your meditation, then you're not really meditating, I would argue. Then you're just wasting your time. Unless your meditation is so good that you don't have to do anything. But if your meditation were so good and you didn't have to do anything, then why would you be here in the first place? You wouldn't need to waste your time with classes like this. <laughs> I don't know. So... I'm excited about this next part because then we get into the meditation chap. We get into the meditation um, poster and then we learn a whole lot of incredible detail that are we going to get through all this? Hold on. How far do we got to go? 229. We're eight, nine, 10. We might get through this whole chapter by the end of the class. By the end of this term, I don't know. Let's find out. Would be exciting because then we can go on to emptiness because that'll be so much easier. All right, here we go. Let's get the right text up here. All right. One seventy-eight, and you're only looking at the text, right? You're not looking at Tim's notes, right? No notes. All right, here we go. Who wants to start reading? We're going to go all the way to the beginning. Oh, Marina, you're first on the pictures. You get to read, starting with Taeyang. Taeyang, con du ship kie shepatar, nitten tren pe mashor var sun. Te se chin go tra rak kan chun trap check yan te matak she chin girik par chete so so nyon po trau du tende. Book. Nice. Good job. So we're finishing up 
a lot of advices of what to do in meditation. We we ended last class with, we actually did the meditation that Pabonka was indicating to us. And I hope many of you continue to do it. Um, we actually learned it in great detail on Saturday as well during, had a meditation here at my house, which I didn't record. No one recorded it. So I'm sorry. You should just tell everyone that they should start recording classes anyway. Um, so basically what he's saying is we've explained in great detail, Shibye, previously, Gongdu, we explained in great detail previously that you need to hold on to the object. Hold on, I have a guy at my house. Hold on just one second. Hey, Logan, what's up? I just wanted to check and see if there's anyone here. I can just walk in. Oh, you can just go right. In. All right, cool. So, sorry about that. Um, you need to hold on to that object, Mikten, Drenpa, you know, recollecting the object. It actually literally means recollecting the object, remembering. Why? Did you not continue? Hold on. For some reason, the screen share is not working. <laughs> Let's try this again. Okay. <clears throat> Drenpa right here, right? Drenpa recollecting. You need to remember the object. You need to like, and it's like, over and over and over again, you're remembering the object from moment to moment, which is kind of a cool way of saying holding on to the object. You're holding on to the object and you should not, my shor, shorwa, you should not let it slip away. All right. So basically that's what we've been talking about the entire time, getting on the object, remembering it, not letting it slip away. So did he say, at that point, once you hold on, get a hold of the object. Jing, jingwa, gupa, dullness and agitation are going to appear, can appear in whatever way, in obvious ways and subtle ways. And they are planning their attack, which I think is a cool way of saying this. Like they're getting ready. They're preparing themselves. Drab means, tab means to be prepared for something, right? Getting prepared. They're getting prepared. Now that you're on the object, these two things are like, <laughs> right? They're like the evil, like the evil, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? They're getting ready to lay their, their, whether they're going to appear in a subtle or dull way. All right. So in that particular moment, you need shashin. You need to have that awareness by shashin you need to have your awareness to be able to detect subtle dullness subtle agitation and obvious forms of the two as well all right so you have to be ready with your awareness and then you need to put a stop to that by relying upon the individual Problem solvers, the antidotes. So, so is individual. Nenpo is the antidotes or the solutions to those problems, which is what we've been doing all along. And you need to do it immediately, if not sooner. Okay. <laughs> immediately, Traundu, right? Traundu. Do it as soon as Shashin detects it, immediately engage 
right? Engage the solution. And I like to say, if not sooner, because if you can engage the solution before you even realize you have a problem, then you might not have the problem to begin with. Okay, that was just logic. Let's go with the next person. Dee, dee, dee. Who's not translating? Anastasia, you're next in the pictures. 179. Shintu selva selche nardendu kyongu. Nice. All right. Once, when, na. Once you have chupa cut off, jingwa and gupa, which is what, Anastasia? Dullness and agitation. Right. Yeah, which one is dullness? Is it Jing? Jingwa? Yeah, right. <laughs> Jingwa, is, Jingwa is dullness. Gopa is agitation. So once you've ended them, once you've cut them off, right? You need to michepa. You need, need to just not do anything. Leave off the efforts of the antidotes, of the solutions. Once they're gone, don't do anything. And just remain single pointed, okay? Chiktune. Maintain single pointed meditation on that object. If it's flowing, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Sorry, I forgot to highlight this. Say chick to ne, single pointedly. You know, you don't take your car to the shop when it's broken. You don't drive to the mechanic when your car is working fine. I mean, very rarely does anyone do that. Sometimes you check at the mechanic and they like say there's nothing wrong with it and you still have to pay money, right? Because you're worried that something's wrong with it. And that worrying that something's wrong with it when nothing is wrong is exactly what this point is saying. You don't need to go to the mechanic when nothing's broke. So don't go there. Just drive your damn car, <laughs> right? <laughs> Just drive the car. All right, and then as you're driving, you still need to, you drive with Shinto very much the clarity, like a very deep clarity, right? And you also need to have Nar in intensity, all right? That sort of like brightness, bright-eyed, bushy-tailed mind, completely clear. You possess it, then do. All right? And you must do that. You must stay in those three things. And once you stay in those three things, then you have really good meditation. Then you can do some cool stuff. Let's see what some of those things might be. Here's some examples. Let's look at Angelica. I got a message that you requested me to speak slowly. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Just good luck. Just try, try your best. Laura, are you doing some meditations? Are you doing some translation? No, no, Roxana's translating. So I think you get to read paragraph 180. Chak Chen Tarna Ni Mik Patang Mik Pat Sin Pasin Jin Ka Chik Gi Chena Chene Nice Perna Si 
ö ra luk ri la shorwa gang ni shorwa i ka la dakpa shindu. All right. So Pavonka Rinpoche is giving us an example. And he says, like in Mahamudra, Chakchen. Mahamudra is a type of meditation in the open teachings about watching your mind. You take your mind as the object, which is kind of fun, right? So instead of like, let's say, focusing on your teacher or the Buddha or analyzing the seven nar steps of Nagarjuna to analyze what things are not empty of or what they are empty of and you assume they aren't. This is specifically the object is your mind itself. All right. So that's Mahamudra in the open teachings. There's also a secret Mahamudra, which you'll learn later. So in Mahamudra, we're saying the object, Mikpa, and so it's interesting for, for you translators out there why there's a she here. Like why, what's the purpose of having a she here versus just saying tongue, right? And you can decide later what that might be. There's a purpose for it there. And you can think about it. So the object, mikpa, in the state of mind holding that object, mikpa simpesem, right? The state of mind which holds the object. Those two things, the object and the state of mind holding the object, both of those, nika, right? Are being provided the object in the state of mind and watching it are being provided by the same thing. Okay. The object and the mind holding the object are being provided by the same entity, the same thing, your mind. Then you got to figure out how that's possible, but that's what's going on. So he says, Perna, for example, a shepherd right? And then we have a sheep, a raluk, and a ri, which is a mountain. So a shepherd who's watching their sheep, right? Is basically a watching. So this is like this like, this shindu is like. So this is the example. That shepherd she will is paying attention, observing both Nika, the the sheep that wander off Shurwa, which is the word that we use for our meditation, which it it wanders off or into dullness or agitation, or when they don't wander off, me Shurwa. So like a sheep, like a shepherd watching his sheep, is able to watch both the ones that are there and the ones that have wandered off. That's what a Mahamudra meditation is like. Yay, that's so super exciting. Doesn't sound very profound, but it's very, very profound, right? You're watching your own mind and your, your mind is watching whether the mind has gone somewhere else. Okay, 181. Who's going to be next? We have one, two, three. Do, 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 do. Sharon. Ludmila. Do 181, please. Nam tok kiepa na ten ko wot da. No word. No word. No word. No word. Tak ne ran shir tan ne Chopatan Nam Tok Nyon Pok Chat Neshi Shivana Sem Sal Riklamik Pate 
nam tok chot su ni su chat la. Good, nice. So, this sort of awareness, this nam tok, right? Which is part of this meditation, right? Or excuse me, nam tok's like discursive thought, right? So when a random thought, a kind of thought arises, like any thought, you're meditating on your mind and you start thinking bananas, <laughs> or you start thinking breakfast, Obviously, I'm thinking breakfast because I'm hungry, right? You start thinking about your problem or you start thinking about whatever random thing comes up, whatever comes up, right? Then we need to examine Bratak, which is actually pronounced Tak. We need to examine the nature of it, meaning the nature of the mind, right? Right. And both, and what we need to do is, uh, let's see here. Let me, this is kind of confusing. When that thought does arise, okay. Let me just make sure I have this correct here. Right. Okay. So we actually cut off that thought automatically, right? We automatically cut it off. We give it up and we put it to rest. We put whatever thing to rest, right? Because we're automatically thinking of something else, right? When you think of the essence of mind, right? You have a random thought comes up, bananas, right? You either, you cut that thought of bananas off and put it to rest simply by thinking about the nature of the mind. Why? Because you're thinking of something else, right? <laughs> it's okay that you thought of bananas or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or whatever friend you have, right? Because now you're thinking about the nature of the mind, which is clear in knowing, right? Or or we can cut it off by applying one of the antidotes, okay? We can cut off that random thought and put it to rest when we think of one of the classical antidotes, right? Meaning, how do you stop agitation? How do you stop dullness? All of those things, right? And you can do these two things. Like the way to cut off a random thought Right. The way you do those is by doing these two things. Great. So that's what's kind of cool about this meditation is that you're using the mind as the mind is to pacify the mind, to bring the mind into single pointed meditation. All right, let's do 182. Who's next in the pictures? Let's see here. Dee, dee, dee. Natalia Safulina, are you able or are you? Cool, let's do 182.
Hello, can you hear me? Yep, we got you. Oh, I can hear you also. Uh, yeah. I will try to pronounce sounds. Um, chap, chapa, ni, che, dan, ge, ge, ge dan. Cha, mm -hmm. cha, cha, chen po, read. Tree, it's almost tree? like a yeah. mm -hmm. tree. Ki, kya su, chung, pa, sem la, mi, mi, na, shi, na, rup. Dopa nam ki de la she le 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 she cho odo sum. Good, 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 good. Nice. All right. So ending at the very, so we have to go to the end of this sentence. Sung, right? Something was said, meaning this is. Who said it? Who said what happens is coming before? You have two options. Who said it? $25. Now you're going to guess. All right, wrong, Maria, not the Buddha. You didn't get it. Not Shanti Deva. Not Shiwala. Da, 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 not Jason Kappa. All right, $50. <laughs> All right, too late. Cancel the bet. Sorry, Jolene, you just missed it as I canceled the bet. You get $25. Send me your PayPal. Jolene got it. Pabonka Rinpoche said it. My teacher said it. Trijan Rinpoche is writing an account of what his teacher said. So his teacher said that we could learn, that we should learn, okay? We should know. That we can get more details on Chak Chakya Chenpo, the great Mahamudra, right? that we should and we can learn more of these things. And he said, if we would like to learn more about this thing, right? If you want to bring this object to mind, right? <laughs> if you want to learn how to bring your mind to shine, to establish, if you want dupa drup shine, if you want dupa to achieve drup shine, right? You can do all of this by learning Mahamudra. So that's another method to achieve shamatha. Mahamudra is a great method. The meditation he gave earlier was a good method. Seeing the llama on your head, break off, and then just focus on their outline, right? Focus on the state of mind. Focus on the state of mind that's perceiving the object. Don't worry about the object itself. So what you're saying to him is I shouldn't pay attention. Yes, you are looking at your meditation object. And you're paying attention to the mind, the quality of the mind that's looking at the object. Is it dull? Is it agitated? Does it have intensity? Does it have clarity? Does it have nard, right? Does it have any of these things? And how do you modify the state of mind that's looking at the object? It makes the meditation much more interesting, honestly. And that's why Mahamudra is so popular because you're just watching your mind. But you have to maintain a state of curiosity. Otherwise, you'll just get bored in meditation. All right. This is a simple sentence. Let me let Tim read it. Sumpa tele 
Tene Semne Gudrup Sulni. So here's the third topic, the third major topic of our discussion on how to develop shamatha. This is a presentation on the nine state of minds. Nine semne state of minds. Right. And that's what we're going to be talking about the nine stages of meditation. So now we've done all the problems and the antidotes. Now we figure out how to actually, what does our meditation actually look like? You need to meditate too. All right. Yashang 184. Gom che ta do na sem ne la yang wa tom pa go de la sem ne gu she go. If you want to do the gom che par, if you want, I already said want, <laughs> if you are really serious about achieving good meditation, right? You'll need to experience, you must go, you must experience deeply these nine stages, all right? You need to have the direct experience of those nine stages, right? And so in order to have the direct experience, what do you need? You need to learn about the nine stages, okay? <laughs> it's kind of obvious. If you wanna get good meditation, you need to have an experience of it. And to have that experience, you need to learn what those nine things are. Yay, that was pretty obvious, not much information. Maria, next one, 185. Deyang Sim Chokpa. Gyundu Chokpa, Lente Chokpa, Niepar Chokpa, Dulwar Chepa, Shipar Chepa, Nampar Shiwar. 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 Sometimes this word is pronounced par, sometimes it's pronounced war. Depending, depending on what kind of word it is. Shiwar Chepa, Nampar Shiwar Chepa. Se chik tu chepa, nyam par chokpa te dule. All right. Here are here are the nine. Okay. Here are the nine stages of meditation. All right. First one, sem sem jokpa. Right. What does that mean? Tim has to translate something. Okay, right? Jokpa, putting your mind on the object, right? That's the first thing you do. That's your first thing, right? Not so uh, pretty obvious. The second thing is putting your mind on the object, gyundu, with brief continuity. Okay, so you get it on that you get your mind on the object briefly. Okay. Third one, lente jokpa. Len means patches, like when you rip your jeans and your, you know, on your knee. I don't think you guys can see that, whatever. Like, let me put some of this up, right? You're not going to be able to see my knee. Okay. The point is, when you rip your jeans and you have a hole in the knee, then you put a patch over that hole. I should have worn pants that have holes in them. That would have been great. So you put a patch over them. So you're basically keeping the mind on the object when you have patches when you lose it, which means the mind is more on the object 
than not on the object. Level two means your mind is off the object more than it's on the object. Most people, if you're honest, you're either doing this, all right? Meaning your mind is off the object more than it's on, or you're not even doing this one. Because if you're not meditating, you're not doing number one. <laughs> Get it? So the difference between level two is you have your mind on the object less than it's off. And the third level is that your mind is on the object more than it's off in patches. All right. Level four is Newar Jokpa, which means holding the object tightly. Okay. And we're going to talk more about which ones what they all mean in a minute. Holding on to the object tightly. Newar chopa. Dulwar chepa. Dulwa. What does that mean? Anybody? I've heard the word a million times probably. Tame to tame. Right. To tame. Well, in this case, yeah. So in this case, it's to tame the mind. Controlling the mind. All right. Shiwar chepa. Meaning to quiet the mind. Nampar shiwar chepa. Very similar. Nampar means completely. So you've com you've quieted the mind here. And then this one is nampar shiwa chepa. You completely do it. Next one, se chiktu chepa. Single pointed meditation. All right. And number nine is nampar jokpa. Reaching deep meditation. All right, so those are all the different stages. Now we're going to go through them one by one <laughs> so we can learn exactly what they mean. And then on top of that, we're going to be learning a thing called the six powers of meditation in this description of the nine levels. What do you use? What kind of meditation superpower are you using at each step? So then you're able to know what is motivating that step, that stage of meditation. So then you can more quickly apply the antidotes. All right. Now I want to show you meditation booster. All right. So here is the meditation poster, all right? This is drawn by Trijan Rinpoche. And these are all the steps of meditation, all in Tibetan. And there are 33, you can see up here, 33 stages that we're gonna be talking about. There's 33 sections of the meditation poster for the nine stages of meditation. How about that? And then here's a long, long description of each and every one. All right. You can see that each one has different stages. I'm going to send this to you right now. And then we will also put it in the platform for you to Download. Hold on a second. Which one do I want? That's just, we'll put both of these in the chat. Oops. Can't do that. Now I can. There you go. So if you'd like to download those, you can download them in the chat and then I will, we will get them on the platform afterwards all right we're going to make reference to this whole picture while we're in the nine stages and here we go number number nine 
Okay. Here's the first picture. Let me make it a little bit larger for you. And let's see, who's going to read? Who's next? Ah, Persis. Yeah, you're next. Problem number one. ทอมทอนี่ลามาเลยไม่ <coughs> Two me two pate. Good. So this is two. No. Cool. Good job, Persis. All right. So now we're on the first stage. Damponi, right? And this is she where is we'll get there in a second. We get this by listening to, to the personal advices, meaning we get the meditation object from our teacher. We should be listening from our teacher, Lama Le, the meditation object, Mikpa, the personal advices, which you listen to, okay? which I think is funny, right? Because you can be getting personal vices and you never listen to your teacher. <clears throat> All right. So, I mean, I think it's probably a little, like when the we know when Pabonka Rinpoche is saying this, he's probably like, yep, you have to get those personal vices. He didn't say just get them. You have to freaking listen to them. Okay. So, and this is the first of the six powers. All right. So it's, it is a power and it's interesting that he said that, that it gets described this way. It's one of the six powers is listening to your teachers. Like listen to what your teacher tells you to do. There's probably a reason why maybe. Okay. All right. And then that's how you get there, right? You get to level one by listening to your teacher, which no one ever does, including myself, right? And then you get to level one by applying that power of listening to the personal vices of your teacher, and they tell you what to meditate on, all right? All right, so what happens next? So from that, we're only able to put our mind on the object in briefly, okay? Just brief, not excessively, not for very long, just briefly, meaning you may just be like, oh, my teacher's eyes. And then you're thinking about bananas for the rest of the meditation. Okay. You're only able to do it for just a little time period. Right. And that's okay. But you're at least following what your teacher says, right? And you're not able, Mitupa, to stay on that object for very long at all. There's no continuity whatsoever, right? We spend most of our time off of the object, brief spurts on, and you have just a little bit of continuity. So question, what do the elephant and the monkey represent? What, do the, what does the elephant and the monkey represent? Illness and agitation. Elephant is illness. Monkey is agitation. Kind of. Almost. It's a little bit. 
So the elephant represents your mind. Okay. And the black color of the elephant, elephant symbolizes the dullness in your mind. All right. And then the monkey represents distraction. Okay. Distraction in general. And the black color represents the agitation. Okay. And we'll learn about more what this means a little bit later. So if we look at this picture again, let me get to this correct. Yeah, let's go here. So I just have too many screens open there. If we look at this picture, right? Wait, let me go to the other picture. Mm -hmm. I suggest studying this before, you know, now that you know what they mean. Each of these six, there's six bends in the road. Here's one, two, three, four, five. So each line represents one of the six powers of meditation. So you can figure out what is the power that's behind the practice at this point. What's motivating it? What's fueling it? Okay. So in this first section, what's fueling the meditation, fueling, yeah, I guess we call it fueling the meditation, would be the power of listening to your llama. Your mind is, a, is way out in front and it's all agitated. Elephant, excuse me, your distraction is way out in front, all full and your mind is way out there and it has lots of dullness and you're just trying to catch up, okay? <laughs> you're just trying to get the, you know, you're just trying to like barely hold on, right? So in this case, like, look, like there's nothing you can do at this point. Just follow your llama's advice, all right? Relax, <laughs> just do some meditation. Don't worry about it. You're, you're chasing something down and it's going to feel like that. And it's wonderful and it's great. And you're doing a good job. <laughs> okay. But you have to do it. You have to do it consistently. You have to chase your mind all the time. Okay. If you're not meditating, you're not going to get anywhere, right? You're never going to move up the stages. You're never going to achieve shamatha and you'll never see emptiness directly. So if you want to cancel, <laughs> if you want to cancel, if you don't want to see emptiness directly, then just don't meditate. If you don't want to really make your life better and samsara better, just don't meditate. That's fine. But if you really want to do it, then meditate. And I know that it's hard to create a practice and to keep it going. I'm not judging you if you're not meditating. I am, but I'm not. <laughs> Because if I were to actually judge you, then I would be just judging myself, okay? But I can say from experience that like, if you do it, you will see the results. If you don't do it, you won't see the results called the third and fourth law of karma. If you don't do it, you ain't gonna, you're not gonna experience it. Here we go, 187. Who's next? Dr. Hoffman, 187. Very much. Topki Cho Gurki Ongdu Shorwa Rikpe Marli Num Tok She Chewe Nyam Jong Yang. Excellent. Good job. Let's see here. Hold on. I need to look at something because I don't remember doing toke. That's what I thought. Okay. All right. So as we're progressing along this, in the moment of progressing along this, we are the activity of our mind. We're entering in Chuk Shukpaya, which we're calling noting, right? 
we're trying just to become aware of the qualities of our mind, right? We're trying to see when our mind flies off, shorwa, under the power of agitation. Chuguki, Wangdu, shorwa. Like our mind is under a, it's under extreme anxiety, duress, right? It's your mind is an uncontrolled monkey and elephant. And these things in there called agitation and dullness are running around uncontrolled and you're not even aware of it, right? So at this point of the practice, we're just developing the ability to note in a general way what's going on. And so what happens here? This is key advice for all new meditators and all teachers of meditation. It will seem like, all right, it will seem like our mind is worse than it was before. It'll seem like we're having more random thoughts than we were having before we started to meditate. Okay. You're sitting to meditate. You're like, yes, I finally got it. And you're like, all right, my teacher said, think of the teacher, right? Golden room, you're doing all the things. And then all of a sudden you literally think of it. And then the next 15 minutes, you're thinking of bananas or your girlfriend or the argument you had, or the fact that you're tired, or you're making a list of what you're going to do the next day. Right? You will think that everything is worse than it was. And that's a common experience for new meditators. And it's a common thing that new meditators complain about. And they're like, I, would, I had a much clearer mind before I was meditating. No dummy. You're just listening to it for the first time. Okay. I wouldn't say those words to someone, but that's what it's like. You think it's worse now. And then you're just noticing for the first time. Right? You're noticing and then you're examining in finer detail what is actually going on up there, right? So you're first examining and then you're going into finer detail. Just what is the state of, of affairs, right? It's like a state of the union address where the president tells you what's going on in the country. And they're like, sorry, folks, it's a, it's a hot mess here in the United States this year. <laughs> we got some problems, right? You're just, you're just being president of your own brain, your own mind. And you're like, Hey, what's going on? And everyone's like, now everyone has a voice. Like all the voters are like stepping up and being like, I vote for this. I vote for this. I vote for this. You're an idiot. You're an idiot. I hate you. I hate you. War in country because they don't like each other. You know, <laughs> that's what happens in your head. And you're just watching it. So just relax. Just relax and enjoy. Because it does get better. But in the beginning, it's a big pain in the ass. Emily Chen, 188. <laughs> and this is what we just said. It's not men like you're have like you're having so many more thoughts. The truth is that it's not that you're having more thoughts. But gi is just that you realize 
that you're having random thoughts all the time. Okay. It's <laughs> just Pabonka's way of saying, it's not that you're having many thoughts. It's just, they're already there and you're just listening to them for the first time. So once you get beyond that stage, you know, five minutes, cool. You then move into stage two, which we called keeping the mind on the object with brief continuity, right? Here's the picture. We get the whole thing in. All right, cool. Shush. Let's see, who would like to read? How about Janet Chen? Ni pa ni de tar som pa sem mi pa la jug sam gi gun kunk zag thud tu pa ni per nama ah. E frang score seek zam gi rin som gom. I'm sorry, oops, gom. <laughs> gom na de ring mi gang ba or gangwa gang ba uh, just yangwa yangwa yung ba tabu yin. Great. Good job. All right. For all you Tibetan people out there, why does this word have a hyphen on it? What does that hyphen mean? I'm correct. It's a prefix letter, but what does the hyphen mean? It means there's two ways to write this word. Okay, here's one way. Okay. And here is the other way. Nope. Yes. Okay. The difference between these two, this is the, let me put it right here. That's how you write this word. Okay. But this word gets written like, so you can see here, see this prefix. So without the, without the hyphen, it gets written like the ga, and then it has the little like curly underneath, like, so it becomes a stacked letter. This indicates that it's not a stacked letter. All right. If anyone cares. And that's why you need to learn how to read Tibetan, not just read the letters, the Roman letters. All right, so let's go on. Got one minute, we'll get through this. The second level of meditation. Now we come to that. This is when we are able to stay on the object. Gyun Kungse, Chungse, excuse me. For just a little bit, you're able to hold on to it for a little bit in a flow, right? You're able just to do that. You're able to hold on just a little bit in a flow, okay? What does that flow mean? So it means, for example... That in the mantra, Om Mani Peme Hung, and it's just written here as Mani, but it means Om Mani Peme Hung. You're able to stay on that meditation for a time period of one round. Okay. 
you're able to, no, this is not a full mala. This is only 21, but a full round of malas, which would be 108 beads. You're able to stay on that meditation. You're able to stay on the object and say, Om Mani Peme Hung 108 times. Om Mani Peme Hung, Om Mani Peme Hung, Om Mani Peme Hung, Om Mani Peme Hung, okay? And you're able to do that without, for that time period, you're able to stay on it without distraction, all right? So that's level two. Can you stay on level two for Oh money pay me home, oh money pay me home, oh money pay me home. 108 times. It's about a minute and a half, maybe two minutes. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Good luck. That's level two. Staying on the object briefly. Oh money pay me home, oh money pay me. Can you get to two minutes on the object without thinking of something else? Then you've arrived and you're in level two. You're completing level two when you can stay on the object for about two minutes. Yay. It's a long way to go, but it's possible. Don't worry. Cool. Thank you all very much. Happy Halloween. Hope you all get some great costumes and get some good candies. I'm going to be at my parents' house tomorrow and giving out candies. So I hope you all have a good week. Enjoy yourselves. And we will continue with all of these. I think we might actually, if we push it, we might actually finish the whole chapter, which would be really cool in this term. All right, guys. Thank you very much. See you next week. And please say goodbye to each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you, Marina. Thank you, dear teacher. Bye, bye, Emily. Thank you, team. Please stay. Please Thank stay. You, team. With the fly. Thank you for a beautiful class. Class is team. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. Bye bye. Happy day. Halloween. Thank you so much. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Okay. <laughs>